inside Blair House, the president's temporary Washington home, extreme fanatics of the Puerto Rican Nationalist Party try to force their way in, guns blazing to assassinate the president of the United States. When the three-minute shooting is over, assassin Griselio Torresola lies dead on the Blair House lawn, and White House policeman Leslie Kofeld is dying a few feet away. Assassin Oscar Collazo and two other guards are wounded as the plot is foiled. Police and Secret Service men examine the damage. A picket on the iron fence is knocked off. The steps and doorway of Blair House bear bullet holes. Only the guards' quick action prevented more casualties. At Washington's emergency hospital, a 24-hour guard watches over Collazo, who, despite a chest wound, recovers to face trial for murder. The president, who was taking his after-lunch nap upstairs in Blair House at the time of the shooting, emerged shortly afterward to attend ceremonies at Arlington. Americans of all political beliefs congratulate Mr. Truman on his escape. Puerto Rico, one of the first Spanish colonies in the New World, United States territory since 1898. The island has prospered under U.S. rule, but a tiny extremist party committed to violence occasionally erupts in anti-U.S. outbursts. These nationalists, two of whose co-conspirators tried to assassinate President Truman, also staged an unsuccessful revolt under the direction of ex-convict Pedro Albizu Campos. One of their targets was the island's first popularly elected governor, Luis Munoz Marin, whose inauguration last year marked a climax in Puerto Rican progress toward self-rule. Under Marin, the Puerto Ricans now have as much political freedom as any state in the Union, and they're working out their own economic destiny as well. For years, Puerto Rico's biggest source of income has been sugar cane. Harvesting, though picturesque to tourists, is back-breaking work for the 150,000 men who still cut the cane by hand. Brahma steers, imported from India as the beasts of burden, are slowly being replaced by tractors, trucks, and other machinery. The total income from sugar this year is almost $140 million. Of this, 60% goes to the islanders. To help establish a balanced economy, mainland industries have been encouraged to open Puerto Rican branches by a 12-year tax exemption. Drawing upon a labor force of 200,000, almost 100 major industries, many of them financed by the islanders, have been established there in the last four years. The slowly rising standard of living has also brought mainland-style department stores. The largest private housing project in the world is the Puerto Nuevo Development, a city for 50,000 people. The working force and most of the raw materials for such projects are Puerto Rican. Puerto Rico, impoverished since the days of Columbus, reaches new heights of democratic progress. Before the United Nations General Assembly, President Nasrallah Entazam announces the 46 to 5 vote, extending Secretary General Trigg Bali's term another three years. The U.S. delegation had strongly supported Lee. Now Mr. Lee, whose decisive action on Korea brought Russian threats to boycott him, reaffirms the independence of his office. I am uh, grateful for the confidence in me that is reflected in your decision this morning. I understand your vote to be a reaffirmation by the General Assembly of the independence and integrity of the office of the Secretary General of the United Nations. Sweden lays to rest King Gustav V, dead at 92. The new king, Gustav VI, leads a funeral procession which includes the kings of Denmark and Norway and the president of Finland. For nearly 43 years, Gustav V ruled over a Sweden at peace. Now thousands view the casket of Europe's oldest reigning monarch, whose span extended from the Victorian age to the atomic era. 
Through Stockholm, his body passes on its last journey as a nation mourns a democratic king who ruled long and well. In Hollywood, tens of thousands, including the great of the entertainment world, pay their final respects to Al Jolson, the immigrant rabbi's son who brought so much happiness to two full generations of Americans. He had just returned from Korea, to which he'd flown at his own expense to bring the soldiers overseas, as he had in two earlier wars, songs he had made famous. Songs Al Jolson had first brought to the screen a quarter of a century ago as the star of the world's first talking picture, The Jazz Singer. Songs like Mammy. Mammy, I'm coming. I walk a million miles, or one a miles, for my mammy. For millions, the final curtain will never fall on Al Jolson. Swanee, how I love you, how I love you, my dear old Swanee. I'd give the world to be among the folks in D.I.X. I I even know my mammy's waiting for me, praying for me down by the Swanee. The folks up north won't see me no more when I get to that Swanee. dedicates a new house of commons, which has been rebuilt on the site of the ancient and historic chamber destroyed by German raiders in the all-out Nazi Blitz of May 1941. The house has been completely restored. The impressive Churchill door, constructed from scarred relics of the old chamber, gives entrance to the new building, the home of the lower and vastly more important of the two parliament houses. British dominions and colonies have sent furnishings for the new parliament. The table comes from Canada. The ink stands from southern Rhodesia. The bar, closed to signify that the house is in session, is from Jamaica. The opening ceremonies attended by the royal family take place in the Great Hall of Westminster nearby. For by tradition, no king of England may set foot inside the House of Commons. The Lord Chancellor, one of the highest officers of the realm, follows members of Lords and Commons and officers from all over the Commonwealth. The tension of the historic moment is relaxed as sweepers prepare the way for the King. Then the King and Royal Family enter. Greetings to the King are offered by the Lord Chancellor as Speaker of the House of Lords. Your Majesty's most dutiful and loyal subjects, the Lords spiritual and temporal in Parliament assembled, beg leave to thank Your Majesty for the most gracious message which Your Majesty has addressed to this House, and to ask permission to express to Your Majesty the unqualified satisfaction with which we have heard that the Commons Chamber has been rebuilt after its destruction by Your Majesty's enemies in 1941. The great mother of parliaments has been dedicated. The Dowager Queen Mary with Princess Margaret leads the royal family out of the hall. 
The British Parliament has been a model for democratic legislatures all over the world. The restored House of Commons carries on a living inspiration to all men who cherish the ideals of free debate and of democracy. In Miami, Florida, 18-year-old Joan Pfluger shows the form that brought her the title of Champion of Champions in the Grand American Crap Shoot. In that national contest, Joan smashed 100 out of 100 clay pigeons to tie with four men. Then she scored 74 out of 75 and beat them all. The first woman champion of champions in this sport. Like Annie Oakley, teenage sharpshooter Joan Pluger makes the men folk take a back seat. Up goes seven-year-old Vicky Mariles on her hunter Poblano to begin a demonstration of equestrian skill that has awed grown-up experts. Vicky, daughter of the international champion horseman, Captain Mariles of the Mexican Army team, takes the same five-foot jumps used in world competition. Then she goes her elders one better with a six-foot jump. No, not this time. Again, Poblano refuses. But now Vicky makes it. On a mount that seems many sizes too large for her, seven-year-old Vicky Mariles reaches a new high in horsemanship. A chain of 40 tiny coral islands surrounding a lagoon is Eniwetok Atoll in mid-Pacific part of the Marshall Islands freed from Japan in World War II. Now historic films made in the spring of 1948 and just released show Eniwetok preparing for heavily guarded and still largely secret tests of new atomic weapons. The test's purpose is to measure atomic effects on thousands of different materials, 30,000 tons of them, not as at Bikini to prove military effectiveness. In special towers, automatic cameras will record the explosions. There are no newsmen, no foreign observers present as members of the 10,000-man Task Force T leave shore for safety just before the explosion of America's sixth atom bomb at Eniwetok, now the Atomic Energy Commission's permanent proving ground. Robot planes take off for atmospheric measurements. The bombs will not be dropped from the air. At control stations, all is ready, now. This is bomb number six, a new atomic weapon, not an improvement of an old design. The five bombs set off in New Mexico, over Japan, and at Bikini are, in scientific terms, already ancient history. The flash of bomb number six is seen by shipboard observers. Bomb number seven. Seen from a different angle, its death-dealing radioactive cloud spreads for miles above the Pacific. This is bomb number eight. Talk Atoll, the world's mightiest agent of destruction, presents its unspoken and unanswerable argument for peace and for preparedness. 